In this tutorial, we will set up Hibernate with Spring. We'll start with my tutorials project on GitHub. So this is a standard public repository. You can pretty much start cloning it and working it, uh, working with it right away. Uh, we'll actually clone it right now. Let's clone the repository. Okay, so now we are importing the project into Eclipse. And notice we're gonna use the exist project into workspace option because this is already an Eclipse project. Now we can of course use the exist Maven project if we need to, or maybe if we're not working with Eclipse, but for now we're just gonna import it as it is. So, okay, let's find the project here. It's in sandbox uh, and we're gonna use the Hibernate4 project and we are going to import it. Okay, now the project is imported. Let's build it. And for that, we're gonna use a very simple clean install Maven command. We have it configured here. Okay, so the project is building and is done. Let's now take a very quick look at the Maven dependencies. We have, you know, the spring context. We have OEM for Hibernate and for the persistence part of the support. We have, of course, the Hibernate core. We have a MySQL connector, just because we're using MySQL in this example. And we have a few test scope dependencies for testing. All right, so now we're gonna start looking at the Spring configuration. So notice that we have a Java configuration here, the persistence config, and we also have the XML configuration, which is identical, but we're only gonna look at the Java configuration in this tutorial. Okay, so the first thing we care about here is the data source, okay? So this is the main data source. That's basically the abstraction of our persistence underlying engine. And in this case, we're gonna use MySQL. We are using the Tomcat DBCP connection pool. In this case, there are many connection pools. This one is a pretty good one. And notice how we are configuring it. We have the driver name, we have the URL, the user and the password. And these are all configured here in the persistence MySQL properties. So we have the driver name, which is the MySQL driver. We have the URL, which is basically localhost, standard port, and the name of the database. And we are also using the create database if not exists flag so that we are creating the database on startup. And then we have the user and the password. Now, of course, these will have to be configured to, to match your local environment. Okay, so let's move forward. This was the data source. And now let's look at the session factory. So this is the spring factory bin responsible with creating the Hibernate session factory. Notice that this is using the Hibernate 4 local session factory bin. There is a Hibernate 3 corresponding one. Okay, so what else are we doing here? We are injecting the data source into it, as you can see here, and we are pa scanning the packages. Now, these packages are basically where our entities will be uh, located. Okay, so we are scanning org building persistence model. So let's now take a look at where that is. Okay, we have persistence, model. And these are our entities. Now, these are just some sample entities. Uh, we can take a look at one. Let's look at foo. Uh, okay, so this is just a normal standard entity. And this is the scanning process. Okay. Next, we are defining the transaction manager. And this is the Hibernate transaction manager from Spring. And we are injecting the session factory into it. And we are using it, of course, to enable uh, the transactional semantics that the Spring framework actually provides. And finally, we are defining some Hibernate properties. So these are just standard Hibernate specific properties that we will be injecting into the session factory. Okay, so let's now start putting things together and let's see how this persistence configuration is actually working. So we're gonna work with a simple test. This is just a, a simple integration test. It's using the JUnit class runner uh, to run the test with Spring. It's using the persistence configuration that we have just defined, and it's auto-wiring a very simple service. Now, as you can see, what we're doing here is we are creating a foo entity, okay? So nothing, uh, nothing too fancy, we're just creating this entity. So let's now run the test, okay? So everything has passed which of course means that the Spring context has bootstrapped correctly and that the creation of the foo entity has also succeeded. Okay, let's take a look at MySQL and let's make sure that the entity was actually created. So here is our database, here is our foo table, and let's see, okay, here is our entity. So we are all done. We have successfully configured Hibernate with Spring.